The Thanksgiving holiday also marked National Family Week. During his proclamation, President Trump said that family is, quote, the bedrock of our nation. The American Principles Project commended the president's proclamation, calling his family focus good politics. So that same organization is pushing a family first agenda. So according to a report released earlier this month, survey data found that the GOP needs to be more pro family to survive politically. So joining us to expand on this is the executive director of the American Principles Project, Terry Schilling. Terry, welcome to the show. It's hey, great thanks to see you. Having you guys. Hey, absolutely. So, Terry, you're a, a strange bedfellow of mine in the same, you know, project <laughs> to try and remake the right and, and kind of shift it away from more from some of these more libertarian, uh, libertarian ideas. Just tell us a little bit about what the organization is about, the agenda, and the whole uh, putting family first as a, as a platform for the GOP. Yeah, what we're trying to do is very simple. Yeah. There is a huge gap when it comes to the pro-family movement, mm -hmm. and that gap is politics. There's a lot of pro-family groups out there that focus on policy or educational efforts, but there's no one that's filling the gap in bridging, uh, you know, electoral politics and public policy. So we, sure. what we, what we want to do basically is become the NRA, but for the family, yeah. um, to where uh, groups that um, are opposing us are opposing the family. Mm -hmm. They recognize us as their political adversaries, and politicians, more importantly, are recognizing us as someone to be fearful of because uh, we might come in an election and, sure. and run some ads against so them. So what yeah. does that mean, though, to be? Yeah pro-family, because that can be defined a whole lot of different ways. Yeah. We define it very simply. It means supporting the family through the economy, making sure that our tax code is not cutting families out or punishing them for different areas uh, or, or different aspects of family life. Mm -hmm. But it also means protecting parental rights when it comes to making medical decisions for our children. Mm -hmm. You're seeing this issue crop up across the country where uh, parents are losing custody of their kids. They're fighting over their custody of their mm -hmm. kids when it comes to like gender transitions, which right. is a really controversial thing. Requires being pro-life, um, mm. requires educational choice, letting parents set the educational agenda for their children and, and be in charge of that. So that's kind of, it, we, we want to attack the, 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 where the, the issues where the family's being uh, assaulted most, both economically and socially. I think so economically, good. though, is the most important one here to really talk about. You talked about this in particular, which is our tax code is not really engineered in order to encourage the growth for more children. This is, of course, our, sorry, the encourage the births of more children. Right now, we are living in a system really where it's more beneficial in order to have less kids and in order to put it over later. We talked about this in yesterday's show in which we talk in which basically the fertility rate has dropped to what a 2018 an all-time low. Yep. And I think that that is something I mean talk about economically some of the some of the policy proposals that would put that forward. So the first issue we're trying to go uh, small bites first just yeah. because you know I've met with a lot of different conservative economists uh, mm -hmm. who are experts in this stuff and there's a real dearth of proposals to help the family. We have plenty to help corporate America mm -hmm. and, and help, you know, uh, entrepreneurs and job creators uh, grow and expand their businesses, but there's nothing geared towards alleviating the economic burden of families. One of the first plans that we've adopted and that we've been supporting is the Cassidy Cinema Paid Family Leave Bill. Sure. This is an interesting thing because it's a totally free market bill. It doesn't create a new welfare pro program. What it does is it gives you a $5,000 advance of the child tax credit. So look at today. You get married out of college to another girl that graduated, you know, you both got forty, fifty thousand dollars worth of debt, that's a mortgage. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of having a kid when you can barely make ends meet just to pay your student loans off is kind of scary to take time off of work and all of that. And so what we want to do is give these couples that have a baby $5,000 right away. Right As soon as they have the baby, they can spend it to take time off, they can spend it to pay down medical bills, and they pay for that uh, by getting a reduced tax credit. So instead of $2,000 a year for the child, they'd only get $1,500. So they're still getting more money than they were before, mm -hmm. and they're getting a little bit of, um, of relief um, and certainty. But so, so I'm a mother of three, yeah. and um, you know I think about these issues a lot. And as you point out, one of the biggest challenges is, is the economic issue. You come out of school, you're just crushed with debt that you've got to pay off, right? You, If you have a kid, the child care costs, and mm -hmm. especially if you want to have quality child care, are astronomical. And it can lead some working class families to having to have less than ideal child care situations for their kids, which is just like the worst possible situation it's to horrible. be put in. So what about some of the, the more sweeping ideas like 
like you know a Sanders or Warren idea to cancel student debt mm-hmm. or the ideas to provide free quality child care where it's mm-hmm. essentially an extension of the public education system I mean are those some of the things that you're open to uh, I think we have need to have a broader conversation about how to solve those issues but we can't on the conservative side of things we have to have offer an alternative that's based in conservative free market principles mm-hmm. that's not based in you're just, talking from a building a coalition perspective. yeah I build, hear you yeah but not but even so building what, a coalition so those, but doing the right are those thing ideas, yeah. though? so right now what we're working on is a a very big plan uh, to cha- make changes in the tax code um, that would equal the playing field between how corporations are treated and how families are treated so what a lot of people don't realize and I've written about this in the Daily Caller is mm-hmm. that you know if you're a business and you have to pay to train or educate your employees you get to deduct all of that from your profits at the end of the year and you don't pay any taxes on that but if I'm a parent and my children are stuck in a really crummy school district and I have to hire a tutor or send them to a different school, I have to pay taxes on all of that. Mm-hmm. Now, we can do things uh, in the tax code to create parity between how corporations are treated and how families are treated. And I think that's a big first step. And that's something that we can do in the free market that would not create any new government programs that would actually. Let me just push back on this whole free market idea. Because, I mean, part of the problem for families mm-hmm. is the free market. I mean, part of why it is so hard mm-hmm. to have kids is because of profit-seeking entities constantly pushing costs up and pushing costs up. It's because of the necessity of having mom and dad working because the wages are not enough to be able to support a family on one job. Mm-hmm. So don't you have to challenge that free market ideology? So I think part of the problem has actually not been the free market, but has also been government involvement. I mean, if you look at what happened happens with student loan subsidies and, and tuition subsidies, all that does is it jacks up the price. I mean, we've done, ever since we started getting involved in the student loan industry, we've seen the price of college tuition skyrocket. And I think there's a direct connection there. It, you know, People forget that prices are, are the product of what businesses can charge and what schools can charge and what people can afford. And so it's like what you guys are talking about with UBI. I mm. think the biggest problem with UBI right now is you give someone $1,000 more per month. Well, what does that tell uh, landlords? Right. They can check your rent up $1,000 more a month. I think what we're getting in with the government thing is more, it's not that the government itself got involved. It was a government and a corporate alliance, which basically made it so that they, no, the person who goes on the hook is not the government, it's not the corporations, it's the people who actually take out the debt. And then you can't even take, you can't ever declare yourself bankrupt from that mm-hmm. debt. And it really is something that screws the consumer most of all. And it's having major social implications for how people govern their lives and how they go through their society. I mean, I, I do think, Terry, like from a higher level perspective, this is a new, kind of a new uh, direction for the right, or I guess maybe an old direction as it harkens back mm-hmm. to you know the 40s and the 50s. Why do you think that is? And, and why is it so much of the current movement is dominated so much by corporate interests. Well, so um, I, it's just kind of been the product of you know twisting every single year. When mm. Reagan started off with his tax cuts, they were not geared towards helping rich people grow and expand their businesses. Right. They were actually geared at eliminating prohibitive taxes and inhibitive taxes. So at that time, the highest tax rate I think was 70%. Mm. And when someone went to go expand their business when they were in that middle range, they wouldn't because, well, I'm not going to double my business and work twice as hard to get 30 cents in the dollar. So he was actually, his tax cuts were started off and they were really great because they were aimed at the middle guys. Mm -hmm. And now the Republicans and the conservatives have think, oh, it's trickle down economics. We almost like took what George H.W. Bush tried to misframe them as, as, oh no, this works and this is what it is. I think though that at the end of the day, what we have to get back to is the contrasting between the Democrats. Mm -hmm. The Democrats are obviously the party of big government. They want more people um, dependent on the government. And the Republican Party faces a challenge right now. Do we become the party of more government, or just a little bit less government than the left? Mm -hmm. Do we become the party of no government or less government? Or do we become the party of the family? And we want our our party and our movement to be the party of the family. The family is the coolest thing about the world. It is the most beautiful thing besides maybe religion. But like, Mm. you know, you have marriages and you have children that come from that. It's the most beautiful thing. And what parents are willing to do and sacrifice for their kids, we need to get back to that. And what I don't like about these government funded programs for childcare, for example, is that it encourages more women to get outside of the home and be away from their kids. And I think that if women actually had the choice to either enter the workforce, I think a lot more of them would actually want to stay home with their kids. I think a lot of women- How does having the option of childcare 
encourage women to work outside the home? Why is that an issue? Sorry, as a woman who works outside yeah. the home and as you know, someone who has lots of friends who work outside the home and have families, mm -hmm. um, I don't see that as a negative thing to have the option of being able to at least afford to work and have the life that you want to live. So there was actually a really interesting Twitter thread with mm -hmm. Warren Cass a couple months ago where mm -hmm. he uncovered this article from the New York Times in 1972. And the New York Times embedded a reporter in the Soviet Union and they interviewed women because there was a big difference between how women in the Soviet Union lived and how families operated versus how women operated and families operated here. And he went to these women in the Soviet Union and he said, you know, you all work and you're not able to do your own private daycares. You have to like give them to a government run daycare. Um, no one know. is saying anyone has to give their kids to a no, government no. run daycare. I understand. <laughs> and this is the this is the weird thing about and this is what would the point of what Orrin Cass was saying is is that at that time in the 70s, uh, it wasn't a choice for them. And they kind of looked down on the American women like, aren't they bored with all this? Like, aren't they yeah. bored with their children? Like, don't they want to go out and work and contribute to their economy and their country? And Orrin Cass's point was, America over the last several years, through our limit or through our no limits on the free market and through the this this cronyism that we've allowed to happen between government and big corporations, what has happened is we've freely chosen this. So we're we have headed in the direction where Moms are outside the home. They're forced to work now, and so like while no one's saying what you about have to. Dads? Well, dads have always been the you know the guys that go out and like hunt animals <laughs> and, and are the providers. I mean, it's kind of like the historical role that dads have always played. But mothers are the nurturing uh, body in the family. Like it's it's I interesting. Mean, this, There's a lot of social science on this. Sound very mm -hmm. honestly sort of authoritarian. Like you're telling women they should be in the home oh. and men should be out in the workforce, no. and we should have government mm -hmm. policies that essentially force that choice. Absolutely not. No, no, no. I'm just saying I don't want to create a whole government program. I think if you're a woman and you're a mom, you should absolutely absolutely be able to go to college, work whenever you want, do whatever. I don't want any authoritarianism. What I'm saying is I want women and moms and families to have the choice between working. And right now they don't have the choice right, really. Because they don't have child affordable child care. I, I think that would exacerbate the problem with offering subsidies. I think that I think that's a whole mess that you don't want to get involved in. What we really want to do is alleviate the economic burdens of families. Look at what Hungary is doing over there. Uh, you know, they're they're offering incentives to get people getting married earlier, having children earlier. If you're a mom of four kids, you don't pay any income taxes. Every kid that you have is a reduction in your federal income taxes. So if you have one kid, it's 25 percent. Two kids, it's 50 percent, and 100 percent if you have four kids. Now, you would think, well, if moms don't have to pay any taxes, uh, they're going to work a lot more. No, they work even less. Yeah, they and work they spend... quite a bit less. And their fertility rate has actually increased quite a bit. I mean, they, they did start very much in the hole. But it is it's an interesting the whole, discussion. Hungary is yeah. a whole other can of worms because the reason they're encouraging <laughs> yeah. that is because of their incredibly xenophobic anti-immigrant policies. And they've had a massive brain drain yes. of a tenth of the country leaving because of those policies. And but we EU, will save that conversation EU, for another European European Union. Appreciate All right. you guys. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate it, man. Hello, more rising after this.